Yes, let's talk about hockey. The show that journeys through the history of the sport of ice hockey from its disputed origins to the game we see today. Last time, we saw the face of professional Russian hockey change from the Soviet Championship League to the International Hockey League, and then to the Russian Super League, before altering once more in 2008 to what we are familiar with today, the Continental Hockey League. Comprised of 21 teams from Russia, one from Kazakhstan, one from Latvia, and one from Belarus for a total of 24 teams in its inaugural 2008-2009 season, the KHL split the clubs up into four divisions based on how they performed the previous year in the Russian Super League. Under the new league banner, Salavat Yulayev continued their winning ways from the previous year, when they defeated Lokomotiv Yaroslavl 4-1 in the league's season opener, earning their club the first ever opening cup an award the KHL established for the winner of the first game of every season. But Salavat Yulayev continued beyond that, racking up 129 points in the standings during their 56-game schedule to finish first overall in the league. Unfortunately, Salavat Yulayev came crashing down in the best-of-five preliminary round of the playoffs, when the 16th-seeded avant-garde Omsk club performed an unbelievable three games to one upset to knock off the defending champions. However, Avangard would be eliminated by the second-ranked Akbar's Kazan in the next round. From there, Akbar's next took down Dynamo Moscow in the third round to advance to the finals against Lokomotiv Yaroslavl. These two clubs would trade wins back and forth until the series was pushed to a decisive Game 7. In this game, both teams would put up their best defensive efforts to keep the game scoreless after two periods. It would not be until midway through the third period that Akbar's Alexei Morozov would net the game's only goal. And after time expired, the league's new championship trophy, the Gagarin Cup, named after Yuri Gagarin, the first human in space, was awarded to Akbar's Kazan. To start out the 2009-2010 season, the league realigned the division so the teams were organized geographically. Additionally, Avtomobilinsk Yekaterinburg was admitted to the league's ranks, while Kimik Voskrysiansk was forced to drop down to the Russian Major League due to financial troubles. The opening cup this year was contested between the playoff finalists from the previous year, Akbar's Kazan and Lokomotiv Yaroslavl. Tied at two by the end of the third period, the game headed into overtime, where Akbar scored the game winner to claim the opening cup honor. From there, Akbars would tally 32 more victories over the course of the season to finish second in their division and begin the defense of their cup title as the third seeded team in the Eastern Conference. Thanks to the goaltending of Petri Vehanen, Akbars would sweep their opening series in three games and then knock off their next two opponents in six games each to reach the Gagarin Cup Finals for the second consecutive year. This time, their opposition was HC MVD and their playoff scoring leader Alexei Svetkov. Akbars would take the first two games by 3-2 and 4-1 scores. However, HC MVD mounted a comeback to win the next three games and threatened to claim the cup in Game 6. Akbars was not planning on going down without a fight, though, and dominated Game 6 by a 7-1 score. Then for Game 7, Akbars' two second-period goals were all they needed, as Vehenen stonewalled HCMVD for a shutout, giving Akbars their second consecutive Gagarin Cup. Prior to the 2010-2011 season, Lada Togliati would drop down to the Russian Major League due to financial problems, reducing the KHL to 23 clubs for the year. Playing in defense of their back-to-back -back cup wins, Akbars closed out the regular season this year at the top of their division and kicked off their playoff run against Bariz Astana from Kazakhstan. This year, the league altered things to include a best-of-seven game format for all of the playoff series played, and Akbars kicked off their first series under the new system with a four-game sweep of Bariz Astana. However, despite their strong start to the playoffs, Akbars would drop the first three games of their second-round match to Salavat Yulayev, before being eliminated after the fifth game. Having dethroned the two-time defending champions, Salavat Yulayev would blow a 3-1 series lead against Metalorg Magnitogorsk in the third round, before edging out a 1-0 Game 7 victory to make it to the Gagarin Cup Finals, 
where they took out Atlant Moscow in five games for the 2011 Cup title. Excitement was high leading up to the start of the 2011-2012 season, when the addition of Lev Poprad expanded the league into Slovakia. However, that excitement was short-lived, when a tragic crash killed 44 of the 45 people aboard the plane carrying the members of the Lokomotiv Yaroslavl club on the season's opening day. Though the opening cup match was already underway when the news of the tragedy broke, the game was abandoned and the KHL announced that the start of the season would be postponed. During the public memorial service for the victims, the Lokomotiv team president announced that the club would not participate in the 2011-2012 season. When the league resumed play, the Traktor Shilyabinsk club led by Michael Garnett and Evgeny Kuznetsov rose to the top in the standings by the end of the regular season. In the playoffs, however, Traktor would only get as far as the third round before they were eliminated in five games by second-ranked Avangard Omsk. This set up a cup finals round between Avangard and Dynamo Moscow. Though the first four games of this series were decided by only a single goal, Avangard built up a 3-1 series lead. But Dynamo Moscow would not go down, winning games 5 and 6, and finally capping off their come-from-behind rally with a 1-0 victory in Game 7 for the 2012 Gagarin Cup. Though the Slovakian club Lev Poparad disbanded prior to the 2012-2013 season, the KHL welcomed a new Slovakian team into the fold, Slovan Bratislava, as well as Lev Praha from the Czech Republic, HC Donbass from Ukraine, and the return of Lokomotiv Yaroslavl bringing the league up to 26 teams in all. Additionally, another NHL lockout had more players coming into the league from across the Atlantic during the first half of this year. The addition of players like Ilya Kovalchuk, Chris Letang, and Sergei Bobrovsky during this time period helped the SKA St. Petersburg Club win 27 of their 37 games while the lockout was still in effect. St. Petersburg would continue to win even after these players departed back to the NHL finishing at the top of the league by the end of the regular season, and during the first two rounds of the 2013 playoffs, they went 8-1 to advance to the Western Conference Finals against the defending champions, Dynamo Moscow. However, St. Petersburg and their top scorer, Viktor Tikhanov, could not overcome Dynamo Moscow and their star goaltender, Alexander Ariomenko, and after six games, Dynamo was headed back to the Gagarin Cup Finals to face the Eastern Conference's third-seeded team, Traktor Shilyabinsk. In this series, four of the first five games were decided by only a single goal, with Dynamo building a 3-2 series lead. Then, in Game 6, Petri Contiola's goal for Traktor midway through the third period even the game at two and sent things into overtime. But five minutes and 57 seconds into overtime, Alexei Svetkov scored the game and series winner for Dynamo, giving them back-to-back -back Gagarin Cup titles. For the 2013-2014 season, the KHL expanded once again, adding Admiral Vladivostok, as well as the league's first Croatian team, Medvedchuk Zagreb. This year, Dynamo Moscow continued from where they left off the previous year, topping all other teams in the standings with 115 points during the regular season. Their success did not translate into the playoffs, though. Lokomotiv Yaroslavl, the second lowest ranked team to make the playoffs this year, pulled off an unbelievable first round upset of Dynamo, outscoring the defending champs 11-1 in the final two games of the seven game series to set the stage for a new team to claim the cup this year. The favorite to fill this role was the top Eastern Conference team, Metallurg Magnitogorsk, and boasting the top three scorers in the playoffs, they set out to do just that, going 12-2 to advance through the first three rounds to the Gagarin Cup Finals. Standing in their way in this final round was the Czech-based Lev Praha. The first four games would swing back and forth, with Lev winning games 1-3 and, and Metallurg taking games 2-4, and four, deadlocking the series at two games apiece. Metalorg then edged out Lev 2-1 in overtime in Game 5 to take the series lead and look to close things out in Game 6. But down 4-3 in the third period, Lev tallied the equalizer with 2.5 minutes left to force overtime, where they scored the game winner 4 minutes into the extra period. In the decisive Game 7, the score would remain close during the first half of the game, until Yaroslav Kosov gave Metalorg a 3-2 lead,
and from then on, Metalorg dominated the rest of the game, winning by a final score of 7-4 and skating away with the 2014 Gagarin Cup. Currently playing in its seventh season, the KHL has sustained the dominance of the hockey scene east of the Atlantic, begun by the Soviet Championship League in the late 1940s, and looks to keep that dominance going for many years to come.